Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all West Virginia students sponsored by West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers and StriveScan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure, sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.org slash student access. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, wvacrao.org. I'd like now, I'd like to now turn this over to our presenters to go ahead and get started. Thank you. All right, it's a thrill of a live show. You gotta make sure you got everything set up. Uh, so my name is Jordan. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor senior with WVU Tech in Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, I'm also being assisted today by Dwayne Ewing, a fellow admissions counselor at WVU Tech. Uh, he's going to be on standby. If you guys have questions along the way, uh, feel free to type it. If you want to wait to the end, we can compile those and answer those on screens, whatever you guys prefer. Um, but any participation will be welcomed. Uh, we're going to go right out of the gate here, and we're going to show you my ugly mug, as if you can't see it already. Um, that is me standing in the admissions office at WVU Tech in beautiful Beckley, West Virginia. That is Dwayne. And that is a picture of the WVU system as a whole. Um, for any of you that were on here on Tuesday night, I believe it was, uh, I did a presentation with the WVU system, meaning uh, I had Morgantown on the uh, presentation with me. I also had Kaiser, home of Potomac State College, on there with me. And we talked a little bit about what makes the system unique, but you can see here actually a visual representation of how it's broken down. Of course, you know, you're here to see WVU Tech today. We're in Southern West Virginia. I always refer to us jokingly as WVU South, um, but you've of course got Morgantown, home of the Mountaineers. You've got Kaiser, home of Potomac State College. And in Charleston and Martinsburg there, you have a couple of health science campuses, AKA learning hospitals of sorts. You see over there to the left, the breakdown of the student population. Uh, WVU Tech has about 1,700 students, over 30 majors, Morgantown being much larger, and Kaiser a little smaller. <clears throat> uh, there's an aerial view of what our campus looks like. Everything you pretty much see there is on South Kanawha Street in uh, Uptown Beckley. Uh, with the exception of one or two buildings, everything that you're ever going to have to venture through is going to be right here. I always tell kids on the first day of class, you know, it's kind of funny when someone's kind of shy or bashful to bump into you in the parking lot coming back from lunch or something, and they're like, hey, do you know where this building is? I don't know what, the, what these letters are on my schedule. I can't tell which building I'm in. You can usually turn them in a little semicircle right there and be like, it's just right over there. Uh, it's very hard to get lost on our campus. We do lack an intimidation factor. Uh, we, we, we like to let kids know, even though it sounds like a cliche, uh, you are more than just a number. It, you know, it, it is more like a family. Um, you see Carter Hall, the bottom right hand uh, portion of the screen. Carter Hall is our most picturesque building. That's where a lot of our publications have photos taken. If you've gotten an email uh, campaign from us before or a, uh, uh, a direct mail uh, mailing, you've probably seen Carter Hall pictured before. Um, you see our two residence halls off in the distance. You got University Hall closer to the top of the screen there, the striped building, and then over to the left where the parking lot is behind that building, that's Hogan Hall. That's our other residence hall. We are in the process uh, of trying to break ground on a third residence hall. Um, on WVU Tech's campus in Beckley. It's going to be in that little green space and that hill right beside or just, just to the right of University Hall, closer to the middle top portion of your screen. Haven't broke ground yet. Of course, we all know the pandemic's put us into a bit of a dire strait, um, but we are, you know, as a whole, planning to move forward with that. Uh, it was going to go live this coming fall of 21. Don't know if that's still the game plan. It may be pushed to 22 or beyond. <clears throat> Uh, if you've never been to Beckley before, uh, it is the largest city in southern West Virginia, ninth largest in the state, 
has a population of close to 17,000. Uh, not the biggest city in the world. It has kind of an urban and a rural vibe all in one. Uh, my supervisor, when he's doing uh, presentations on campus in the past with students before the pandemic, he always likes to throw out the stat that even though Beckley has a population of 17,000 during the course of a business day, sometimes that jumps upwards or close to uh, a little over 125, 150,000. In some cases, I heard a report that said nearly uh, 250,000 one time people pass through Beckley in the course of a day. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that 250,000 people work in Beckley, but it means there's a lot of foot traffic, a lot of shoe leather, a lot of, a lot of cars moving through the community because in southern West Virginia a lot of your business is done in Beckley. Um, it being the next closest city going north would have to be Charleston which is another hour just about. Um, there's a lot to do in the area. If you're familiar with campus you know if you're not um, we're close to shopping we have a, a mall nearby um, a lot of different restaurants both fast food and you know sit down style uh, many hotels uh, movie theater things like that. Um, and there's other WVU offerings in the Beckley community aside from WVU Tech. Um, we have a launch lab on campus. That's a small business incubator, um, AKA it's, it, it's a hive, meaning that people who have maybe small business ideas, uh, you're trying to learn how to gain capital, how to get a project off the ground. Um, they've spurred over 42 businesses the last several years. Um, it's open to not only students, but the community and members of the community can come in. If you have an idea for a business, they'll help you with that. Uh, the Launch Lab also has a maker space that includes a 3D printer, um, and you can take different widgets and things like that and run through the 3D printer. Um, I always use the example. You know, people say, why would, I, why would I use a 3D printer at the Launch Lab to go have an interview for a potential uh, manufacturing process that I would like to pursue with, it, with a, a vendor? Well, you might be making a bicycle sprocket, okay? Round, has teeth on it, you know, it's pretty simple. But that's pretty expensive to make if you have to make different prototypes, different sizes, dimensions, number of teeth on the sprocket. It's a lot cheaper and more convenient to make it on a 3D printer. Take that prototype to the person you're trying to get the deal with and see if that's what they want. And instead of having to go out and actually get a plasma cutter or, or a lathe and, you know, try to actually make that or mill that down to the, uh, the actual metal uh, final product that you're looking to, to sell. We have the WVU School of Nursing on campus. Um, this is the exact same school of nursing that you would find in Morgantown or Potomac State College in Kaiser. Um, legitimately, you know, the diploma comes from WVU, um, the transcripts come from WVU. You honestly couldn't convince someone that you didn't go to Morgantown if you hung your diploma on your wall in your office someday. It would, it, it's the exact same. It would be really hard uh, to tell the difference. Um, we also have a HISTA branch on campus and extension service at WVU and the WVU School of Medicine as a pre-med program that we do offer through our campus. <laughs> Here you see a campus map. Uh, everything from the picture you saw earlier is going to be from building two and three there. Three is Carter Hall to kind of give you a mental picture of how that stacks up. Everything down that street is going to be where the main heart of campus is. Over to the left, buildings one and buildings 27, that is the business and finance building, our administrative and extension service office, um, as well as the interdisciplinary studies building. The only times you would really need to go over there is if you're pursuing our, uh, pursuing our new culinary program. We'll talk about that here in a few slides, um, but their kitchen is located over there. There is a couple of classrooms for nursing students occasionally used over there. And the IDS building is home of our RBA program and our early enrollment program, which we'll talk about shortly. Also worth pointing out before I jump to the next slide, um, the parking on campus. We do allow freshmen through senior to bring cars to campus. You do have to pay for a parking pass. Super inexpensive. Um, it's a really good investment. There's not a lot of uh, overlap with people coming and going. Um, you know, I've been working on campus for, I mean, I've been with tech for, for nearly you know, over five years now. And uh, you know, you rarely ever find a situation where you can't find at least one parking spot in some capacity. A lot of people get concerned about parking spaces. So at a glance, Tech was founded in 1895. For those of you who don't know, it was founded in Montgomery, West Virginia as the Montgomery Preparatory School. And over time, it has changed names a few times until we finally landed on WVU Tech and were absorbed by the West Virginia University system. So uh, we've been happily a part of that for uh, several years now, since about 1997, finally went official around, around 07. Um, but yeah, we've been with WVU ever since. 1700 student population, close to a 50-50 male-female breakdown. Uh, it's actually pretty cool that over the last several years as we revamp these presentations each year and we come up with the new statistics and, and run reports, uh, it used to be male over female, slightly, you know, reversed. 
but now we have finally broken through that threshold and uh, the female population does outnumber the male population in our student body. 15% uh, of our population is out of state, representing 30 states. Uh, over 50 of the 55 West Virginia counties are represented at WVU Tech, and we have nearly a 10% international population representing over 30 countries with a 17% minority breakdown. So I know, you know, again, we seem like an infomercial when we say some of these things. We sound like a, it's a sales pitch, but in all honesty, um, we are a very diverse campus very small, very tight knit. Um, I myself, I'm an alum of WVU Tech, uh, class of 2015. I had class with students from China, students from India, from England, from Scotland, from Canada, from South America. Uh, it's really cool, you know, I'm just a small town, you know, West Virginia boy from Fayette County, West Virginia. And, you know, to, to go to a local college, it's a few minutes down the road and actually get to understand how these people live in their countries, uh, learn their culture, uh, kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's mutual. You know, you show them a little bit about how you live and how things are where you're from, and they show you likewise how things are there. It gives both sides a greater appreciation of how things work, and it definitely, I think, makes us all better people. Um, I would not trade my experience at Tech for anything. I would not trade my experience with the diversity and the inclusion for anything. It, it, it's a great experience, especially before you, uh, you know, jettison yourself onto a career. Um, you kind of understand how you know, how people operate and how to work in teams and, and learn from the other person. Really good team building experience. We have two academic colleges on campus. Think of these as departments. Um, think of these as uh, uh, where your degree is housed at. If you are majoring in something like business, uh, criminal justice, forensics, accounting, uh, anything like that, you are going to be in the College of Business, Humanities, and Social Sciences. If you're in something like engineering, uh, construction management, biology, chemistry, pre-med, you're going to be in the Leonard C. Nelson College of Engineering and Sciences. Now, again, we are one university at Tech. We are not separating you into two different colleges. Just think of these as how uh, your program's accreditation will be allocated, what will be listed on your diploma, on your transcripts when you actually get that someday. Um, but no, no, it's just think of those as departments. Um, we have over 30 programs uh, of study an average uh, student faculty ratio of 12 to one with an average class size of 17. Uh, again, back at the cliche, you are more than just a number, but it really is true. It's hard to get lost in the crowd at Tech. Um, you really do get that one-on-one -on -one individualized attention with your professors, with your advisors, things like that. Um, and our faculty have over 12 and a half years of service in their field on average, so you know they know what they're talking about. We have 18 NAI athletic programs. Um, very comparable to NCAA Division II. We'll talk more about that shortly. And we have over 40 student organizations, AKA clubs that you can get involved in. So a couple of our accolades um, over the last several years, since 2012, we are one of the only institutions, not saying we are the only institution, but one of the only institutions in the region that have steadily gained enrollment each and every year since 2012. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, that could mean one more student than we had the year before. That could mean 50 more students than we had the year before. But that means that we have continued to grow every year since 2012. And as of right now, going into this current academic year, uh, we, we don't think that looks to change at all. Um, we have nine ABET accredited engineering programs. ABET is the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. That is the gold standard for engineering accreditation nationally as well as globally. Um, nine of our programs, as well as our program in engineering as a whole, has an overarching accreditation with ABET. Um, we have to renew that every couple of years. I think we're up for renewal this year. Uh, but we've had that for many, many years. Um, we're consistently ranked, as you see there, as one of the top 100 best undergraduate colleges um, by US News and World Report for engineering programs. Um, and we are number one in the state of West Virginia by pay scale um, for student return on investment. Many of you may be like, well, what's return on investment? How does that work as a student? What that means is our students on average, we're not guaranteeing this for every single person, but on average, our students go into the workforce, get their jobs and make more money on average than any other college's graduates in the state of West Virginia. Now, I'd love to sit here and tell you that if you pursue the same business management degree that I pursued back in 2015, that you're gonna get a job making six figures right out of the gate. I would love to tell you that, and I'm not saying it's impossible. You may very well do it, I wished I would've. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we do put our students in a good position to prepare themselves for a career opportunity. Um, we do employ many students in a lot of cases within six months after commencement 
placement, which is the, the graduation from the university. Um, and our, our graduates do well when they get into the workforce. <clears throat> we are ranked top five for international student uh, enrollment by the 2017 Open Doors Data Report, and we are ranked the top 15% nationally among four-year colleges and universities for salary potential, and that piggybacks on top of our number one in West Virginia for return on investment. Our graduates, not just locally, but nationally, are going back home and getting jobs in their field fairly quickly, making a pretty good salary while doing it. <clears throat> Here's a, a little snapshot of what uh, we refer to as our new student profile. Um, our top five states for enrollment, pretty easy to guess. Um, it goes, of course, West Virginia as the top. You have bordering states, Virginia, Maryland, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, geography has a lot to do with it. If we could expand this list a couple more lines, you would see states, believe it or not, like North Carolina, Florida, and Texas. Uh, we even had California on there for a few years. A lot of times people, when we have these presentations on campus and I have the opportunity to talk to you face to face and we tour and we, and we kind of, you know, chat along the way, people will ask why that is, you know, how in the world does a small school in Southern West Virginia have uh, solid enrollment from Florida or from California or Texas? Well, it all goes back to a variety of things, but athletics is one. Our athletic programs, they recruit, they go nationally, they go internationally. We have a lot of international students that play sports. Um, you know, they'll come out, go out, recruit their athletes and bring them back to campus. Uh, that helps our enrollment from different states. The one about North Carolina and Florida, I don't have any scientific uh, facts. I don't have any data to show this, but I'm just gonna tell you what my opinion is. And I've told my boss this many times. The reason we have a handful of students from North Carolina and Florida that come each and every year, retirement states. You have people who live here. I, I'd be shocked if out of the participants watching this right now or who watch this later, I would be shocked if you don't have a relative or a family friend that has retired or recently moved to North Carolina, South Carolina, or Florida. And a lot of times these people have grandchildren Maybe they started their families or they continued their families down there. Their kids followed them there. Their kids had kids. Next thing you know, they want to find a convenient school at a convenient price you know, they know a lot about. And then they have coming back to us in the long run. And I'm sure uh, my fellow colleagues at other institutions in the state of West Virginia probably echo those sentiments. I would have to imagine they have similar experiences uh, with those uh, students in those states. I mentioned earlier, 50 of 55 counties are represented from West Virginia in our enrollment. Our average uh, GPA, ACT, and SATs for this coming or this past year, uh, 3.59 was the average GPA for students enrolled here. 20.5, you know, between a 20 and 21 ACT composite, and between a, a, a 1050 SAT. Now, by no means are we telling you you have to have these scores and this GPA to get in. I myself did not have this. I got in. It was okay, but you have to understand that we do recruit solid students. We have students that have a solid academic background and they look to pursue academic excellence at the collegiate level. And that goes hand in hand with what we offer. And that's why these numbers look a little higher than uh, what many may think. But no, you do not have to have these scores or these marks to be uh, admitted to the institution. Be great if you did though. Uh, our faculty, very distinguished faculty, we have 87 full-time faculty members. We have a handful of adjunct professors, uh, so it's a little bit larger than that number. Um, no classes are taught by graduate or teaching assistants. Everything that we offer is a full-time experience with the professor of that field in that discipline. Their primary responsibility is to teach and to advise. They are there to help you through the process in the classroom and on your progression plan. And you can see over to the right, the, uh, the professors in different colleges we have. We have uh, the business college, the engineering college, and our school of nursing. Um, so you see the breakdown there of the PhDs by school and college. Here you see our programs of study. Uh, <clears throat> that is in its entirety. We offer over 30 programs. You'll see a couple that kind of stand out. You have the Aerospace Engineering 2 plus 2 program. That is a degree that you would start in Beckley, do your first two years, and then transfer to Morgantown to finish your last two years. That's a little confusing sometimes because people sometimes associate 2 plus 2 programs with community colleges and four-year colleges going two years at one, getting an associate degree two years at the other. But no, on our campus, you start small here, a little cheaper, a little uh, less intimidating environment, and then you transition to Morgantown later. <clears throat> I do apologize for my coughing, guys. My allergies are really on point today. So I hate that I keep having to like catch my breath. You will also see our hospitality program. That is our culinary degree that is just launched this fall. 
Uh, we have about three or four students in that program right now. We just opened up the applications in July for this program, so it didn't have a lot of time to get the marketing off the ground, but that's a program we think will grow fairly quickly. One reason for that, it is the only two-year associate's degree we offer on our campus. Everything else are four-year bachelor's degrees. Uh, the only unique thing that you need to keep in mind when applying for this program, and you can find more on our website, you will apply on the Potomac State College website. You will actually select your campus. You'll have a three campus option because we all share an application, us, Morgantown, and Kaiser. You will select Kaiser as your campus. Once you select Kaiser, you will have an option on the application for your degree of study. You will see a culinary on the Beckley campus option. It's very self-explanatory once you start into this. It may sound foreign to you right now, but it's a lot easier to understand when the time comes. You will just jump on that, you will fill that out, and you will send your transcripts to Kaiser. Once you're admitted in the Office of Potomac State, or the Office of Admissions at Potomac State College processes you, they'll send you that admit letter, then you will reach back out to me, or rather I'll reach back out to you, and I will put you in touch with your advisor so the chef can actually get you into your program, uh, get you into your courses, and get you registered. But it's a little unique. The reason that came to be the way it did is because we happened to inherit, when we bought our property a few years ago and moved to Beckley, we inherited a top-of-the-line culinary facility uh, over on our Neville Street campus where the uh, administrative and, and interdisciplinary studies buildings are located at. And Potomac State College just so happened to offer and confer associate degrees. Well, we were able to uh, use the best synergy possible as working together to say, hey, Potomac State, we can give a facility for these students, but can you confer that degree so we can actually offer this without crossing any lines that we shouldn't? And they, they were willing to work with us. WVU was happy to see that program get off the blocks. And we've had a really good relationship so far with their admissions office, our admissions office, and with the students who have registered thus far. Uh, definitely hope to continue that relationship. Definitely look forward to seeing some new applications for that this spring and fall. You can apply for either term for that program, spring or fall. But at some point through that process, you will probably work with me because I am the point of contact for the culinary program and I help facilitate the admits to their advisor to get registered for courses. We also have pre-professional tracks. So you saw the four-year degrees and the culinary associate degree that we offer on the last slide. Here you see our pre-professional programs. Now this is kind of a trick, a trick question I ask people. I know you can't answer me live right now, but a lot of times we ask people on campus during a presentation, let's say you got a pre-law degree or you went to school for pre-law. What is your actual degree going to be in? Because there's no bachelor of science degree that says you earned a bachelor of science in pre-law, pre-med, pre-anything. It's going to actually be in a discipline with the pre-professional track as your area of emphasis. Well, it's a trick question, like I said. Pre-law could be a business degree, a criminal justice degree. I mean, it could be an accounting degree. Um, now, pre-med and pre-pharmacy, pre-dental, those are going to be a little, a little more specific. It's either going to be biology or it's going to be chemistry. Um, but what this does is allow students to get a degree in an area of emphasis, apply to graduate school, because you're not going to be a doctor with just a four-year degree. Uh, you get to apply to graduate school, whether it's on the Morgantown campus or any other college nationally, and they understand that you have an emphasis and an understanding of how that profession works, and you're ready to go into that field. Um, we do also have a uh, memorandum of understanding referred to as an MOU with the Osteopathic School of Medicine uh, in uh, Greenbrier County, West Virginia. And the Osteopathic School will actually honor students who have pursued a pre-med program in biology on our campus. They will actually cut down their requirements with an articulation agreement of what they will accept in terms of transfer credit. And you can actually get your degree, uh, or actually become a doctor for that matter, depending on what the discipline is, one year faster. So rather than that being a traditional eight years in total, uh, that knocks it down to seven years. Now, again, I don't know, I, I wanna point out, I don't don't know how they look at it from a doctoral standpoint over at the osteopathic school, but I do know that for a general curriculum track in from our college to their college, they do accept our students and they do cut that one year off. Uh, you can definitely check out our website for that. Contact our biology program for more questions about that. Uh, I'd be glad to facilitate that. If you had questions, you can just call or email us and you'll have my contact information here shortly and uh, I'll definitely answer those questions. Campus housing, I talked about the two residence halls that we currently have, Hogan Hall and University Hall. Uh, University Hall uh, is slightly newer. It was built around 2010. 
uh, that facility uh, is where our upperclassmen, our juniors and seniors live. Hogan Hall is where freshmen live. Hogan Hall, in a lot of cases, you're going to share a room with someone in your suite. It's gonna be like a, like a typical two person dorm room. Uh, in University Hall, you do have the opportunity to get a suite. And in that suite, you will share the suite with four other people, but you do get your own living space. You do get your own room. So the way I break it down to people, on average, in a normal situation, if you're just applying for housing, University Hall, singles, Hogan Hall, doubles. Pretty straightforward. Both facilities do have a full-time live-in resident director, which is a full-time employee of the institution. Uh, they are not resident assistants. They are resident directors. They are full-time employees, but resident assistants still do live on each floor. Uh, in, in the hierarchy there, if you ever had a discrepancy, had a question need answered, you're supposed to go to your RA first. The RA can't satisfy your need, then you go to the RD. But we do have both, just like a traditional college would. We have uh, wireless high-speed internet in both facilities, TV, fitness areas, study spaces, things like that. One thing I like to point out for those hardcore gamers out there, <clears throat> is that we do have a dedicated uh, a dedicated server, a dedicated internet connection for students who are playing, let's say, a PlayStation, an Xbox, uh, maybe a PC game, uh, to where they can actually use that bandwidth for their games, and it doesn't interfere with the bandwidth of the rest of the institution. Um, so we do have a tech gaming internet uh, connection, and then we do have the traditional WVU encrypted uh, or guest connection for those who are using their laptops for other things. But it's pretty cool that we, uh, we, we take into account students who like to play games in their spare time, uh, you know, in the back in the dorm room and they're trying to relax. Our dining services on campus uh, is provided by Sodexo. That is who provides our product. Um, we do have a Starbucks on campus. We call it the Tech Spot. It's a, a grab and go cafe that also brews Starbucks products and other uh, grab and go menu items. This is all part uh, of the same meal plan you will opt into when you enroll at the institution. So you see the 10, 15, and 19 meal breakdown. That is traditional for our Bears Den. Our Bears Den is the, the clever name as the Golden Bears that we have for our cafeteria. Um, but the 10, 15, and 19 plans um, per week, that actually you can slide your card at the cafeteria or down the hall at the tech spot, and that'll each count as a meal. So you do have the opportunity to uh, use that in both capacities. Um, a lot of times I tell students who are trying to figure out with their parents, you know, how, let's, let's say, I mean, if you live 30 minutes from home, if you live an hour from home and, and you're, you're on campus with us living, it, it, it's, you know, I always tell people, you know, don't go for the, you know, for the 15 or the 19, Th take into consideration the nights you're going to be home, the days you may be off, uh, the days you might finish class early. Um, so you don't want to put yourself in a financial hardship because you paid for too many meals and you're not going to use all those meals. A lot of times student athletes make that mistake. They'll come in, they'll opt for the 15 or the 19, realizing they could have probably gotten away with the 10. Now, by no means, if you love to eat, you know, I love to eat, you can get as many meals as you would like there. You can go for the 19 per week if that fits your style, but just keep in mind, you are not forced to do that. But if you live in the residence halls, you are required to take out a meal plan. Now, let's say you're a commuter student. I was a commuter student. Uh, Dwayne, when he was in college, was a commuter student. You can, uh, you can opt in for a commuter meal plan. Uh, you see the 25, 50, and 80, that is per, I believe that's actually per semester. Yeah, that's per semester. So, uh, you know, you can get some meals, you know, if you don't want to go between classes over to one of the restaurants in town, uh, you can just, you know, you can get your commuter meal plan on, go swipe your student ID where your uh, meal plan is loaded at, and you can get your, uh, you can get your meal taken care of there without having to spend too much extra cash. I mentioned we have over 40 student clubs and organizations. We have academic organizations and we also have social organizations. Academic organizations are gonna be more along the lines of something that's associated with a program of study. So you see their biology club. A lot of times biology students are gonna be in that. Although there is no restriction, you can you know, be in different clubs at different majors. Psych club, student nurses. I myself was the president of the SHRM club when I was a student, the Society for Human Resource Management. Uh, a lot of business and accounting students did that. Although accounting has their own program, the Accounting Leaders of Tomorrow, also known as ALOT, which I think is a clever name. You have social organizations, such as our Student Government Association, who oversees all of the funding um, through the university for the different clubs. Um, you have intramural sports on campus. You have uh, the International Student Organization, Golden Bear Esports Club, which now we actually have an esports program we'll talk about shortly. And we also have Tech Alliance. 
uh, you know, you guys who are familiar with the Beckley area and Southern West Virginia as a whole already know this, but for those who are not uh, equipped with that information, uh, we are one of the best outdoor recreation hotspots in the world, uh, whether it's skiing, whether it's, uh, you know, rafting, hiking, biking, zip lining, uh, you're not far from Fayetteville, West Virginia. Um, I'm sure you guys know about the New River Gorge Bridge and all the recreational activity over there. Um, but, you know, we really do take it for granted sometimes that we do live in such a beautiful area uh, with some of the uh, access to things, you know, globally that we you know, others don't. Um, I've been at college fairs. You know, for, for you all who usually would see us this time of year, it would be face to face in a gymnasium or an auditorium. We would be at a college fair. We'd be in your lunchroom visiting for a, you know, a high school lunch visit. Um, you know, I've been in college fairs out of state. You know, I've been in New Jersey. I've been in Delaware. I've been in Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, places like that. Uh, and I've actually bumped into other admissions reps from other states who will be talking about like, hey, I know where you're from. I'm like, really? You got a family member there? And they're like, well, no. But I, I go down and I, I raft the New River uh, every year. I raft on the Gali River every year. Um, so, you know, they're very familiar with our area. That's also another reason that we launched our adventure recreation management program last fall, because we found a need for students who pursue an interest in hospitality and tourism to actually use our location to their advantage. Uh, so we did hire three staff for that program. We have seen that program grow over the last year or so. And we definitely think with our proximity to outdoor recreation activity that that program is just going to continue to grow. Uh, we do have 18 NAI athletic programs here. Uh, you can see those on the screen. Uh, we do have eSports that is brand new. Uh, you can actually uh, now play eSports. You can play games. Uh, the way the coaches have explained that to me is, because I get this question a lot, is what games do they play? If you have enough students on the team that are interested in a specific game and they show a competitive interest, they will actually compete at that game in different tournaments that they have. Uh, right now, I know a few that they do, uh, Fortnite, uh, League of Legends, Rocket League, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe Call of Duty, I'm not 100% sure, Overwatch, uh, some games like that, uh, Super Smash Brothers, you know, they do some of the old school games as well. But that is a fun program, a fun team. We, we definitely think that uh, they're just going to get more and more competitive each and every year as we continue to grow and recruit for that, that team in particular. Um, baseball is always competitive. Basketball is always competitive. Uh, basketball, men's and women's basketball, both, I believe, had a share of the conference last year. And they had gone to their national tournaments. Our women's team actually won their first round game. Uh, out in Iowa is where the national tournament's held at. And our men were in South Dakota where their national tournament's held at. Our men were actually out there on the floor warming up right around the time the pandemic kind of hit its peak and everything started to shut down. Uh, so our women and our men had to literally leave after traveling that far out west and come back. So that was a little bittersweet for us. You know, it was good that we made it, uh, but it was very you know disheartening that we had to end our season on a note like that when we really thought we had more to prove. Um, but our teams, uh, even though <clears throat> they compete with other NAIA programs, uh, you know, we are the only NAIA school in the state. A majority of our conference, the River States Conference, are in Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. Um, so we do a lot of travel to the Midwest quite often for our teams. Uh, but we do compete against some of the in-state Division II teams, um, you know, our, our border teams. Uh, as a matter of fact, our basketball team had an exhibition a couple years ago with Marshall, and uh, they've had one with, with the Mountaineers. Uh, the, the one with the Mountaineers did not end uh, great, but our, our guys did put up a really good fight. And uh, it was an awesome experience for students coming to Tech and a small population like that to go up against, uh, I guess, what you would refer to in West Virginia as the Giant, uh, going up against the mothership in WVU. Um, but uh, we do have uh, club teams as well. We have cheerleading is considered a club team. Uh, I know track and field, both indoor and outdoor, are super competitive. That's a big program for us. Uh, golf's competitive as well. Soccer is always competitive. Um, they've won the national title at their level uh, in the last few years. They've been to the national tournament quite a few times as well. Uh, cross country is another one. But uh, we do have really top of the line student athletes that compete at a high level and they make the grade while doing it. Campus safety is another priority. Uh, honestly, we're one of the safest campuses nationally. Uh, if you know a campus safer, I'd love to, to see it, honestly. Uh, the only crimes you're ever going to see are crimes of opportunity. I mean, nothing serious. We, we've never really seen anything come up on our campus that's caused any trouble or anybody complain or have to file a report or anything. Um, you know, just like if you're going to the shopping mall or you're going to the park, 
Um, I mean, if you have uh, a pair of AirPods or a brand new iPhone or an Apple watch, yeah, I, um, you know, I wouldn't just set it down on a park bench and walk away for 30 minutes to an hour, but, but we've never seen any issue like that. <clears throat> we do have what's called the live safe app on our campus. It's kind of like the lost my iPhone, uh, app where you can actually look to see where somebody is in real time. You can find your device. Uh, you can have family members, you can give them permission to see, uh, where, you're located at if you're walking home from a ball game or something, or you're walking back from, from dinner somewhere and it's late. Um, you do have the opportunity to let them walk you home virtually and they can notify campus police if you veer from your path. Um, we do have, uh, I believe up to eight full-time certified state police academy graduates on our police force on campus as our true WVU university police on our campus patrolling 24 seven. Uh, and we do have a tech alert emergency uh, texting system. So if weather's become a factor and class will be canceled, you know, heaven forbid there's ever a catastrophe on campus or around campus that would notify you not to come to, to class as well. But it's really neat to have, especially in the, in the wintertime with snow and unpredictable weather. Uh, our students uh, love to do community service. Our Golden Bear family has logged over 7,000 hours of community service since 2017. We're affiliated with 30 community partners and organizations, and we do different things different times a year. That has been restructured a little bit this year with the pandemic, um, but usually the first week back to school, everyone, faculty, staff, students get involved in different things in the community, whether it's a litter sweep, uh, whether it's painting, whether it's, uh, you know, cleaning out. Dwayne and myself had to go over after one of the Boy Scout jamborees a couple years ago and take down a lot of the tents and, and help out with that. Um, so there's all kinds of things to get involved in. Campus success programs. We do have an accessibility services department. If you have any issues whatsoever with an accessibility, um, please let us know. We will find any way possible to accommodate your need. We do offer personal counseling, student health services, such as a student health clinic. We do offer free academic tutoring. So that is free. You can get that tutoring for free. And if you also qualify for a federal work study position or state, you can get a job as a tutor if you're good in a certain subject and you can actually uh, adequately tutor. Um, first year advising is handled by our student success center. So we're not going to throw you to a departmental advisor you're not familiar with. You will register uh, with the student success center for the first year and then they will eventually hand you to a department to finish the rest of your progression with us. And we also have a uh, TRIO grant funded program on campus and student support services. Here are some grad school opportunities. I'm not going to stay on the list too awfully long. I want to give an opportunity uh, a minute or two for questions at the end. I know I'm running a little late on the time here, um, but WVU is a, a great opportunity. Students who transition from here after they get their four-year degree to go on to get a master's or a doctorate in Morgantown, uh, your student ID, your student email, your username, all that's the exact same uh, because once you're in the WVU system, it never changes. And then there's other institutions nationally, such as Louisiana Tech. Uh, we had a student come through Louisiana Tech who got a four-year degree in mathematics here, and he's now uh, a doctor. He's taught at, at, at you know, different universities. Uh, I believe he's actually traveled the country quite a bit uh, since his time with Tech. So you can really start here and go anywhere for that matter. Some of the places where our graduates work, um, just a few that jump off the page, IBM, Walt Disney, the FBI, a lot of our forensics uh, students like that. NASA, we had a student get an internship with NASA a few years ago, and she actually got a full-time job out of that after she left us. She's still with NASA to this day. Uh, I saw her on uh, one social media outlet the other day. She's still doing pretty well. Um, Charleston Police Department, Toyota. Toyota is also a big, uh, a big part of the hiring process for a lot of WVU engineering graduates. <clears throat> We do have a career services office that will help you with resume building, uh, career planning, internships, and job placement as you approach graduation from WVU Tech. So it's good to know you have someone in your corner that will help you prepare uh, professionally after you finish your academic career with us to uh, pursue a career. And that's also a big reason why I think our job placement and our salary potential is so high for our students because they, they definitely know how to approach it as soon as they graduate. Now, this one right here, I have to emphasize this. We do have a new test optional process. A lot of colleges have jumped on with this. It's kind of hard sometimes to schedule an SAT or an ACT with the pandemic. Uh, maybe you've come through and you haven't had a chance yet. You can apply. Now, let me, make, let me point this out. You can apply <clears throat> at any point in time, even in the past. You can apply with a current transcript. So don't think you have to graduate high school uh, before you can apply. I mean, you have to graduate before you can enroll for the most part, but you can apply at any point in time, uh, typically after October of each year, because we like to uh, align that with when FAFSA opens for your financial aid. 
but you can apply test optional now, meaning that you can apply, send a test score or don't send a test score, but if you select test optional, we will not hold your test score against you. If you don't have it or if it's a poor test score, we will not hold the score against you. You will be uh, ranked based off your GPA and some of your performance and core subjects. Engineering and nursing are two programs that you always have to have a test score. I wanna go ahead and point that out. Engineering and nursing always have to have a test score or a placement equivalency. But for all the other majors on campus, you can be admitted without a test score if you choose to do so, but you get the best opportunity at scholarship dollars if you send a test score. So I strongly, if it was me, if I was telling my family, uh, and like I tell, you know, I have a relative getting ready to come through high school now, and we're, we're prepping her a few years in advance for college now, always send those scores and always try your best to, to send those scores. But keep in mind that we're not going to hold that against you. We know times are hard. Uh, we're doing our best to accommodate that. Financial aid, we share the same FAFSA code as WVU and Potomac State College. So you see 003827 right there on the screen. Uh, you can visit our financial aid website to ask questions about the FAFSA process. They can help you with that. Um, you can schedule appointments with our, our, our financial aid staff on the WVU Tech website. Uh, you can contact uh, anybody who you may need to help you throughout the process. If admissions can't help you, we'll make sure financial aid can or vice versa. We also have different scholarship information. We have scholarships for test optional applicants and scholarships for traditional applicants that send the test score. But keep in mind, the better scholarship dollars will always come with the test scores. We have many ways to get in contact with our admissions counselors and our entire admissions staff. We have a UChat instant messaging plugin at the bottom right of our admissions page. So you'll see during the workday, 8 to 4.30, uh, you'll see a little pop-up with little green dots on who's online. You can ask us live questions anytime through the course of a week. You can schedule one-on-one -on -one calls with us. There is a contact us tab at the top right of the page now when you visit admissions.wvutech.edu. Uh, you can call us. That's my personal favorite. I'm a little old school. I like to actually hash it out and talk with people. And uh, if you're sending transcripts to us, you can send them digitally to the tech admissions email you see there or the mailing address as long as they come from an official carrier from the institution or the board office or the college for that matter if you're a transfer. Um, and you can always find these on our website as well. Many of you may be enrolled in early enrollment courses, meaning that you are earning college credit while in high school right now. Uh, if you are, that's great. If not, you have the opportunity to take uh, classes your junior and senior year with us online uh, and earn college credit for $75 per course. You can learn more on our website or give us a call. It's a great way to get college credit knocked out uh, in advance of enrolling in college, and those are very easily transferred if you do choose to pursue another institution, although we really hope you use that here at Tech. We do have open house coming up virtually on October 24th. Uh, you can sign up under uh, admissions.wvutech.edu. You can click the visit tech option at the top and you can sign up. I'm gonna talk to you about uh, financial aid, about student life, residence life, uh, kind of hash out a lot of the things we talked about in more detail in this presentation today. Uh, but open house is a great opportunity to, to learn more about campus while we're in the process of not being able to bring you on campus. It's good to know you have a way to learn more. You can stay connected by following our uh, social media handles here on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The top one is the university one. The bottom ones on each of the uh, tabs there are the admissions office handles in particular. Monty. So with that, uh, if anybody has any questions in the Q&A that Dwayne may not have answered if you did ask anything, uh, now would be a great time to type that in. We have literally uh, probably a minute and a half left that if you want to ask something outside the parameters of this presentation, you can always reach out, you can call us, you can email us. Uh, my office number there is actually forwarded to my cell phone right now because I'm working remotely hybrid uh, to where some days I'm in the office, some days I'm not, um, but we're always here to take any questions at any point in the process. So hopefully you guys were able to tolerate my rambling for the last 45 minutes with a sore throat. Um, if you guys, uh, you know, have any questions at all, or you guys ever want to talk, you know, we're here. Looks like we may have had one pop up there. Are SAT and ACT scores required? For yes, those are actually required for engineering. If you don't provide those, you will be admitted as a general education student until you provide those. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to get those out of the way or learn more about taking an Alex exam, which is a placement test for uh, engineering. Uh, and it's just one. You can do the SAT or the ACT or provide an Alex score. You do not have to send them all. That's a, that's a good question. A lot of people uh, probably wonder why we list those ACT slash SAT. It just means and or.
Good question. Matt might have time for one more. Were the on-campus meals per? Those were per semester. Uh, you can go if you go back and watch this later, and you want to stop the, stop the video there. Uh, those were per semester. That's also under the cost and aid section of the WVU Tech website. Good questions. Sorry, I didn't leave you more time to answer those. Okay, with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us today for this session with WVU Tech. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions that's being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions um, at wbacrao.org slash student access. We have two more full weeks of sessions like these available to you from over 100 colleges from nine states and two countries. So be sure to check those out. In a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording should you choose to watch it back, as well as all the other session recordings that have happened already at wvacrao.org slash student access. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a nice evening.